right, hello, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Wendy Ivy Martinez and I am Geek and today we're going to be talking about my June TBR. Yeah, June, June. Let's go ahead and just get started because this is just blowing my mind that we're already in summer. Let's talk about the books I'm planning on reading this month for June. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get it started. Yeah, let's get it started in here. Let's go. Okay, so per usual, I usually separate my TBR by like category, so books I'm reading for this vlog, and the, that vlog, and then, you know, things like that. So let's go ahead and get started with the books that I'm going to be reading for reading vlogs. And the first one is, again, the blind picking my TBR. So I have to pick three books from here that I have not done so, but I'm probably gonna do that after this. So I'm gonna be picking three books blindly. And after that, I am completing my Frida McFadden, is Frida McFadden worth the hype vlog? And I'm reading one final book from her, and that is going to be The Teacher by Frida McFadden. All I know about this book is that it has to do with a teacher and this specific student who has had a lot of, has caused a lot of trouble in the past with other teachers. And now this teacher is very, like, of almost like afraid of what this student might do but I guess there's some like tension or like we don't really know who the teacher is and we don't really know who the student is and there might be some history there that's all I know I heard that this is a good one to go in blindly so I don't want to know anything beyond that but that's the one for my Frida McFadden vlog I'm going to be doing two other reading vlogs that are going to be actually coming out in July so I like to have like a month head start on those vlogs the first reading vlog that I'm going to be doing is reading YouTubers' favorite standalones. The first one being this baby right here, The Silent Patient. The Silent Patient, this is a favorite of one of the YouTubers. Who is this? Who, which, there's a YouTuber that really enjoys this one. This is like her favorite, one of her favorite thrillers. This is about a woman who has you know a regular job and has a normal husband and has like a really average life there's nothing that's going particularly bad for her or anything like that but one day she just comes home and ends up shooting her husband in the face like multiple times until he like is like unalived right and she gets sent to a mental facility and she never speaks again and there is now we are following this journalist who is literally trying so hard to get her to speak and he will not leave until she finally speaks. So I'm excited for this one. I have heard nothing but good things about this one. I read this one, like the first chapter of this one in my reading the first chapters of books and like ranking them. And it didn't really catch my attention the first chapter, even though that's the one that's supposed to be like grabbing, grasping you. So we'll see how I feel about this one. Who knows? Who knows, you know? So that's The Silent Patient by Alex Mc McLeady's, McLeady's, McLeady's. So the next book that I'm going to be reading for this vlog is episode 13 and this is by Craig DeLuey. And this one I'm so excited for because this is a horror novel and we are following a paranormal investigation team. I love watching ghost hunting shows. I love watching anything with like ghost hunting or like capturing ghosts on footage and on camera. So I'm very excited for this one. It very much reminds me of that one movie. I forgot what that movie was called. Where there's like ghost hunters and they get stuck at that one place. That's what it reminds me of. I'm super so stoked and excited for this one. We are following this these two specific ghost hunters that want to prove that there is an afterlife using their equipment and they have a more like sciencey approach versus like a traditional ghost hunting approach when they go to these locations. So they hit the holy grail when it comes to this one mansion because that had all sorts of all kinds of exper experiments that happened in the 1970s and is known to be super haunted. So when they go here, they're like, okay, we got the holy grail. Like we are getting footage, we are getting evidence. And then everything goes wrong. And the story is told in like mixed media. There's like journal entries and things like that that gets mixed in throughout everything and we slowly start to piece together what happened and how everything went horrifically wrong for them. I'm so excited for this one. This one looks so amazing. 
I am a huge fan of like, again, ghost hunting stuff. So I know that this one is going to be one that I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy. So that's episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. Next one for that reading vlog, the reading YouTuber's favorite standalone is Riley Marie. Favorite, one of her favorite standalones, and that is Sea of Ruined by Pam Godwin. I'm excited for this one. Okay, what it says here in the back, it says, Bennett Sharp is on the run. Wanted for piracy, she fears neither God nor death nor man, except priest Farrell. The unfaithful, stormy-eyed libertine hunts her with terrifying possessiveness. Nothing will stop him from coming for her. Not his unforgivable betrayal. Not when she's captured by the ice-cold pirate hunter, Lord Ashley Cutler. She must escape Ashley's prison and priest's decease. But can she walk away from their twisted desires? Two gorgeous captains stand on opposite sides of the law. When they collide in a battle to protect her, the lines blur between enemies and lovers. Passion heats, secrets unravel, and hearts entangle until they break. Can love prevail in the sea of ruin? So this seems like a love triangle e enemies to lover sort of tale. Or it could even be why choose for all I know. I am excited about this one. We have like pirates and I've been wanting to read pirates and I think that summer is like the perfect time to jump into pirate fiction and pirate fantasy so i'm very excited for this one she is she's not she's a little bit hefty but not too hefty you know what i mean so i'm but i'm excited i'm so excited for this one i'm so stoked for this one so the next reading vlog that i'm going to be doing is reading books that i want to read just because it's my birthday month and i just want to tackle on books that I want to read that I can choose. So we are going to be doing a few for that for what? You okay there? That is not one that I want to be dropping, a first edition. No, no. Okay, so we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I have been dying, dying to read this for so long. One, I love Jennifer L. Armentrout. She was my introduction to Enemies to Lovers and when I read like the Lux series and she does it right. She does it so well. So I'm excited for this one. Plus we have a character who I believe is named like Hawk or something and he supposedly resembles Astarian from um, Boulder's Gate another reason to be excited for this one. So in this one we are following Poppy and Poppy is like a maiden and she was born and raised to basically grow up to be sacrificed to these like gods so then the kingdom can thrive but Poppy doesn't want that. However her choice has never been her choice like she was literally born and raised to be this maiden. However she does have a heart and she does have a soul. Then she meets Hawk who is one of these like soldiers, these guards that are meant to protect her and to take her to where the gods are supposed to grab her or whatever but then things start to happen and they start to form this like bond and then poppy starts to question things even further and then so does he however poppy has a duty to uphold because she is literally there to like save her kingdom and if she doesn't do her duties the whole kingdom can fall and so there's all that this looks really interesting again i am i already know i'm a fan of jennifer l armentrout's ya work so now that she's writing like adult books i'm pretty sure i'm gonna love this one this is a hefty one as well so she be thick but hopefully she be good too hopefully she be good i have high hopes for this one i have such high hopes for this one okay so next for my reading whatever i want because it's my birthday month vlog I'm also going to be reading The Ever King by LJ Andrews. Speaking of pirate romances, I told you guys that I want to binge read all kinds of pirate books. So if you have any more pirate books to recommend me, please do so because I am always on the hunt for more. So what it says back here is they stole his crown so he stole their daughter. For years, Eric, the scarred king of the Ever Kingdom, has thought of nothing but vengeance against the man who killed his father and trapped him beneath the waves, making Eric a prisoner in his own realm. When his enemy's daughter 
unwittingly breaks the chains on the Ever, and Eric plans to toss her into his game of revenge. She's innocent, he's vicious, but he will take back what he lost, no matter the price, unless she seals his heart first. I love this! Pirate romance, enemies to lovers. I heard it's really good. I have heard nothing but good things about this one. I don't think I've heard anyone say that it's not good. So again, another one with such high hopes. I'm hoping that June is going to be a five star across the board sort of month, especially when it comes to like pirate romance because I am craving it. I am craving, I have not read a pirate romance since I was like a teenager. So I need this. I need a pirate romance in my life, okay? An adult pirate romance, please. Next is going to be books that I'm going to be reading for this is going to be my bit my in real life book club pick so it's actually my turn to pick the book for this month so i am between the ever king if they want to read this one that way i don't have to read an extra book or this one because i really do want to get to it i've been dying to read this one and that is butcher and blackbird by bryn weaver i heard that this is like a dark comedy romance sort of vibe about two different serial killers that end up falling in love so these are two serial killers that end up that only unalive other serial unalivers but and then they have this like annual competition to whoever who can kill like the most people or something like that or is it whoever can kill can get to that one person first and then they start to form a romance and I love serial and alivera romances, especially when the woman is a serial and alivera. I notice that that is my thing. Unhinged women is my vibe, okay? Anything with an unhinged woman that goes berserk, I'm gonna enjoy it. So I'm excited for this one. <laughs> so that is this one here. I'm excited for this one. I'm hoping they pick this one or the Ever King, whichever, either or. But I really do want to get to this one ASAP, so... That's Butcher and Blackbird. Butcher and Blackbird. So the last two, one is I'm continuing my Throne of Glass reread because I really wanted to get to Crescent City. So I am on to book two. I finally read book one, right? Finally. And that is Crown of Midnight. This is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. So if you guys do not know what Throne of Glass is about, please read it. If you guys are a fan of fantasy, if you guys read Akatar and you want more fantasy elements to it, read Throne of Glass. I personally read Akatar and honestly, I like Throne of Glass more. And I haven't read the last book, so I can't speak for the whole series, but up until that one, I do still like Throne of Glass more than I like Akatar. And in this one, we are following a assassin named Selena Sardothian. She is witty. She is charming. She has like, she's like my favorite protagonist of all time. I just love her personality. And she is basically sent to these like salt mines of Endovia, which is where these like slaves are. And she eventually gets released by the prince, which is like her like arch nemesis's son because she absolutely cannot stand the king. However, the prince offers her a deal. Like if she joins this whole competition where she has to compete against other assassins and thieves and wins and becomes a king's champion, after a few years, she will be granted freedom and a free and become free. And she has the freedom to just be herself again. She will never get sent to those salt mines again. So Selena's like, you know what? Okay, bet. I'll hold you up on that. And she goes to fight in these competitions and these competitions turn out not to be <laughs> what they are. A lot of challengers end up going missing and then found unalive and like cut to ribbons. And so there's a whole mystery aspect of that happening. And there's just so much to the story that I just, I really, I really love it. Okay. there, I love it. I love it. The first one has very minimal romance. And it starts off very YA and as you get progress up until like the fifth book that's when it becomes adult and I don't this is one that because it's so fast paced I didn't mind that it was YA it didn't even read as YA to me I just I I loved this series so much so we're on to book two Crown of Midnight next 
is my monthly nonfic pick. You guys know that I want to read more nonfiction. And so for this month, I'm going to be reading Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza, How Common People Are Doing the Uncommon. I've been on a like rampage of reading books that sort of bridge the gap between spirituality and science. It kind of like collide into both worlds. And this one is one of them. So back here it says, what would it mean to become supernatural? What if you could train your brain to tune into the frequencies beyond our material world, change your brain circuitry and chemistry to access transcendent levels of awareness and transform your very biology to enable profound healing? So Dr. Joe Dispenza, he does a lot of like, again, bridging the gap between like spirituality and science and has a lot of like scientific studies behind all that and has different like activities and exercises for you to try as well so you can feel it for yourself but I'm just excited about this one I've been wanting to read this one for years now and hopefully hopefully I can finish it because it is a lot of text it's a lot of text so there is that one anyways you guys that is all the books that I plan on reading in June. Let me know what is on your guys's June TBR. And yes, have a very, very good day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.